When solving problems relating to projectiles, we may be told that there is air resistance or that there is no air resistance. In a situation where there is air resistance, we will often be told the direction that the wind is blowing from. In this situation here, we are given a projectile which is thrown from a height of 0.7 meters at a velocity of 16 meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees. We're also told that our acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per square second. We're finally told that there is no air resistance. Let's assume that there was air resistance and that we had a wind blowing in the opposite direction to the direction of motion of the projectile. If we had wind blowing in that direction, it would mean that it's opposing the horizontal movement of our projectile. So how then do we deal with this? That wind would typically be given as a force. And we know that force equals mass times acceleration. So we would find our value of acceleration so that we can use that in our formulas S equals ut plus half at squared v squared equals u squared plus 2as and v equals u plus at to determine the deceleration in the horizontal direction. In this case our question says there's no air resistance so we're going to ignore all of this. So what do we know about this projectile? It's moving in a parabolic motion. So I'm going to draw the motion of our projectile. Until it hits the ground. So because it's thrown at an angle, it's going to move upwards until it gets to a maximum height and then it begins to fall downwards. There are two components to the velocity of the projectile. We've got a component in the horizontal and a component in the vertical. What do we know about the values of these two components of the velocity of our projectile? We know that gravity is acting to pull our projectile downwards. So in the vertical plane, we have an acceleration of 9.81 meters per square second acting downwards. We know that there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction because there's no wind resistance. So we know that that component is going to be constant throughout the travel of the projectile. What are the values of these components at that point when the projectile is released? Remember how to resolve our velocity. The horizontal becomes 16 cosine 35 degrees. And the vertical at that point is 16 sine 35 degrees. But remember that we've got an acceleration acting in the vertical plane. So any moment after its release, the velocity is going to be different in the vertical. But throughout the motion, that velocity in the horizontal is going to stay the same. To find the maximum height achieved by the projectile, we know that it's going up at that point, at that velocity. And then we've got an acceleration due to gravity pushing it down. And at some point, that acceleration due to gravity is going to make our velocity in the vertical direction equal zero. At that point there, at the very top, we know that our velocity V is equal to zero. 
in the up-down plane. So I'm going to put a V there to represent vertical velocity. At that same point, our velocity in the horizontal direction is still going to be that same velocity of 16 cos 35 degrees. Now, which direction is acceleration due to gravity acting? It's acting downwards. That means because it's perpendicular to that horizontal velocity, it has no effect on that horizontal velocity. That acceleration due to gravity only has an effect on the vertical component of velocity. If we had wind, like I said, coming from that direction, it's going to cause an acceleration, which is then going to reduce our velocity in the horizontal direction. In this case, because that is zero, we have no effect of wind. Therefore, that velocity is going to be constant until the projectile hits the ground.